Hi, welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is John. Today we are going to briefly introduce the confinement effect, an uprising concept in electrochemistry based on a review paper named Electrochemistry Under Confinement by Jokstider, Tashulik, and co workers in Chemical Society Reviews in 2022, Volume 51, and page 2491. We are going to describe the phenomenon, the classification, and a few examples and end with future perspectives. In the development of electrochemistry, we've witnessed the miniaturization and the increasing complexity leading to effects that deviate from macroscopic models. Some of these effects occur due to different behaviors at the nanoscale, and some are because of additional interfaces causing confinement that leads to different electrochemical behaviors. The term confinement has appeared more frequently in the electrochemical literature mainly due to the progression in the research of nanomaterials and nanostructures, like the example shown in the right classified under 0D, 1D, and 2D confinements. It has reached a point where confinement can serve as an overarching link between exciting new research strategies. The confinement effects are less explored and therefore have large potential for disruptive technological breakthroughs in the future. In the later part of the video, we will see some applications in electric deposition and electrocatalysis. The authors classified confinement effects under six categories with various degrees of freedom. Number A, surface confinement, has the least degree of freedom because the static interaction between surface and adorbates limits their translational freedom. Examples of this type include under potential deposition or chemically self-assembled monolayers. The monolayer can alter the electronic structure of the electrode and it can be used for electrochemical sensing and electrocatalysis. Number B involves solvated reactants whose movement is limited by the confining barriers like 2D layered materials or 1D nanotubes. The confinement places an impenetrable barrier in closing vicinity to the electrode, which will tune the adsorption properties. This has promising applications in electrocatalysis, which we will show in an example later. Number C through number F are a porous material, a nanoreactor, a 1D channel, and a liquid-liquid interface. The solvated species can move in three dimensions in these systems but are limited to a nanometer range. Some non-classical effects include Knudsen diffusion where the adsorption is no longer rate limiting due to the increased probability of collision within the confined space. In addition to Knudsen diffusion, the authors summarize numerous other physical effects that can be altered by confinement. These include influence on mass transport, where all diffusion, convection, and migration are affected due to the confined space and increased electric field. Applying potential in confined spaces can also lead to overlapping double layer, which can further affect mass transport by ionic current rectification, which increases the ion conduction for one polarity but decreases it for the opposite polarity. This also changes the reorganization energy of solvent molecules and the ion distribution in the outer Helmholtz plane and specific adsorption, which leads to changes in electron transfer kinetics, also known as the Fromkin effect. Lastly, the confined space can expel some constituents of the system due to the steric effect and can limit the excess of reactants if the pore size is smaller than the size of the reactant. Electric deposition in nanochannels is a good example of electrochemical behavior deviating from the bulk. In the current profile, the initial drop is due to seed formation and 1D diffusion as shown in regimes 1 and 2. Then the main deposition happens in regime 3 with a steady metal deposition shown as a plateau in the current profile. When the nanochannel is close to filling up, the electric deposition behavior becomes comparable to macroscopic behavior and causes a sudden increase in the current, as shown in regimes 4 and 5. Some technologically relevant applications include lithium dendrite suppression for lithium metal-based batteries. In this study, Liu, Cui, and co-workers found homogeneously distributed ion flux in all polyimide nanochannels with diameters of 350 nanometer, leading to a uniform growth without the formation of dendrites. This simulation was supported by the scanning electron microscopy images of the electrodeposited lithium, where figure A through C are a flat current collector and D through L are de deposition down on a nanochannel modified electrode. One example that we mentioned earlier in the video is to use 2D layered materials to promote activities in electrocatalysis. In this work, Alexa Kern and co-workers put a 2D layer of porous polymer on a single crystalline gold 111 surface 
and showed enhanced HDR activities at pH 13. They used three types of nitrogen-containing polymers and found that all polymer-coated electrodes had stronger activities than the bare gold electrode. They attributed this to the polarity of the functional groups, which affected free energy of adsorption and water orientation. The stronger adsorption increases the residence time of water and atomic hydrogen close to the electrode, which consequently increases the catalytic activity. In addition, they found that the N3 polymer causes the hydrogen in the water molecule to face downwards, which destabilizes the molecule and favors water dissociation. In the last example of this video, Glasscott, Dick, and co-workers developed a method to deposit nanoparticles onto graphite with a robust water-in-oil emulsions method. They used horn sonications to produce billions of droplets per milliliter with metal precursor salts dissolved in them. With this method, they essentially created nanoreactors and were able to control the radius, coverage, and the morphology of nanoparticles with high precision. As the discipline of electrochemistry under confinement is just coming into shape, the authors expect the discovery of more confinement effects. Of course, the distinction between the confinement effect and other effects like the nano effect will be important to be verified both experimentally and theoretically, as the authors suggested in the flow chart on the left. Due to the complexity of real systems, it comes with many unknowns, which make the distinction difficult. The authors expect the development of correlated and complementary electrochemical and spectroscopic methods to reliably overcome the method of too many unknowns. The development in theoretical chemistry ranging from classical approaches to ab initial molecular dynamics will also help understand the mechanism. The authors vision that the understanding of the kinetics of electrochemistry under confinement as a benchmark tool for nanoscale investigations of relevant topics like interface and double layer formation purely kinetic electrocatalysis, drug delivery via nanocarriers, and changes in chemical reactivity under confinement. I hope this video helps you learn the uprising concept of electrochemistry under confinement. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment sections below. The main reference in this video is listed here and in the description section. The video in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.